There's a new add-on for Blender called Perspective Plotter, and it's basically FSpy, but built into Blender, which is a huge time saver, so let's jump in and get started. So like all add-ons, you want to make sure that you've installed it and it's active in the add-ons menu. Once we do that, we'll jump into our camera view, we'll hit N, and we'll find it in the side menu. Notice that it doesn't show up in the side menu when you're not in the camera view. So once we're in the camera view, we'll click on Perspective Plotter, we'll choose three vanishing line points. You can do two or one, but three is going to give you the most accurate results. Before we plot the perspective, let's throw in our background plate that we're going to match to. I'll import our clean plate for a VFX shot. I'll turn up the opacity and click this button to begin plotting. One thing to note is that you don't want lock camera to view checked because then if you start zooming and moving the camera around it's actually going to adjust the camera position and the only thing we want adjusting the camera position is perspective plotter so make sure that's unchecked. This way you can zoom in and get a better look while you're plotting points without moving the camera. And the way it works is pretty simple. If you've used FSpy before then you know how to do this. 3ds Max also has a perspective plotter built in so this works the same way but the quick explanation is the red lines are the x-axis which is left and right the green line is the y-axis which is depth and the blue line is the z-axis which is up and down so basically you want to find lines in your shot that represent each axis and then you want to line up the corresponding lines to each axis once we have a rough placement of the perspective lines now we can zoom in and fine-tune it and this is why we didn't want lock camera to view it to be checked now if I move our plane we can go along the x-axis along the y-axis and it seems to be locked onto the floor there so I'm just going to scale this up because we're going to use this plane as a shadow catcher. I'm going to add a cube, scale it down a little bit, and then position it so it's resting on the floor. In Perspective Plotter, I'm going to check Freeze Guides, and this will prevent us from accidentally moving any of those guides. So now our camera is set. I'm going to add an HDRI so we can check the lighting, and I happen to have an HDRI that matches this shot. So we'll open up an HDRI and line it up to the shot. Now one thing to notice that in the camera view, what we're seeing is a clean plate, and that's because we put the opacity of it all the way up to 1 so that it's not see-through at all. But if we lower it, now we can see the HDRI through the clean plate. So with this, I just want to line up the HDRI a little bit better to our shot so that the lighting matches and it makes more sense. So I'm just rotating it along the Z-axis. So we're going to turn the opacity for our clean plate, which is the background image that we set in the camera. We'll turn that back up to 1. So I went in and I changed our render engine to cycles. And now we can click on the ground plane, click on visibility, and make it a shadow catcher. But now we see the HDRI through the ground plane. So we have to go into our render settings, go into film, and click transparent. And that'll make the HDRI transparent. So now we just have the clean plate image. And now we can move around our cube in 3D space on both X and Y. And we can see that it's locked onto the ground there. If I hide the cube, you can see the shadow disappears. And if I bring it back, everything seems to be great. We can move it around. It's locked onto the surface. Now we can do all the things that we need to when we perspective match like this. We can do our ceiling destruction like we did from our last tutorial, or we can do other things. So that's a quick overview of Perspective Plotter. I think it's really awesome to have this integrated into Blender rather than going out to an external program, doing it there, and then exporting it, and then importing your scene into Blender. It's just a pain in the ass. So this is so much easier. It's so much faster. I hope this helped. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe so I can keep on bringing you more videos like this as well as more advanced tutorials. My name is Paul Dovecchio. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.